Hey guys, it's Danny. Okay, so one of my viewers suggested that I make a video about the osmosis system that I use and talk a little bit about it. We had some issues with the system until we figured out how it works. So I guess this will be beneficial if you're interested to buy a system. I'll tell you a little bit about it, how it works, what difficulties we encountered and so on. So first thing, my osmosis system is a pretty fancy one. You can mount it under your sink and it actually came with a faucet, which I will show you later on. But you can actually go for a simpler type of osmosis system. It just connects to your pipes. It's really not that pretty, but it's much, much cheaper. I actually decided to went for something fancier, let's call it like that, just because I do have a lot of orchids. It's easy for me to put it under the sink and have osmosis water on the tap and so on. And anyway, it's the type of investment you don't really do every year. It actually will last you quite a lot of time. All you need to do is change the filters. So if you're gonna opt for something like this, you will get everything in the kit. You just need to install it. You'll get the pipes, you'll get um, all of the things that you see here. So how it works is it will connect to um, your pipe, your current pipe underneath the sink or in the bathroom or a pipe which delivers water. Now the thing is for the osmosis to work, this type of osmosis, you need a pressure of a minimum two bars. Luckily the average pressure of uh, home installments is about two bars or above. If you live on an upper floor you'll have some issues and you might need an osmosis that comes with a pump actually which will help with the pressure. So before anything just try to test the pressure of your tap water or where you want to mount the osmosis because most of them, if not all of them, work with a minimum of two bars pressure. We had a little bit of issue because firstly we installed it to a different line and we didn't have enough pressure and it didn't work and I thought we should get a pump but luckily the tap, the one from the municipality has enough pressure and this thing works now. So the components of your osmosis system will include a sort of a little faucet that will be connected. You can see it, that one right there. Of course the cables and everything that you see here. It will probably come with a frame because you can attach it if you want. We decided not to keep it attached because we want to move it around if we need to move around. You will usually have three filters below. One is the five micron sediment, carbon block and one micron sediment. All of them pretty much have these filters, I think, at least this version. Also you'll have the membrane and another filter post line cartridge. I don't remember what this is, but anyway, this is how all of them look like. This is the basic set. Beware if you go for something like this, which is designed for drinking. Apparently you might have a bigger version, which contains a remineralizing filter. You do not want that. It's not okay to drink pure osmosis water because it does not have minerals. So some of them come with a mineral filter. Orchids don't need minerals if you're going to add fertilizer. Okay, and all of this here is connected to a tank, which you see here. Now, don't be misled by how big that tank is. The thing is, it does not retain as much water as you might think. Inside of the tank, there is a sort of a rubbery container, like a balloon, which expands. That's where the water is collected. And my particular one holds about three and a half, four liters of water. This is why I save it. I did not know this. It didn't specify it anywhere on the box. It said that the volume of that thing is 12 liters and I was happy, but it's not. That is a pressure tank. It has pressure because for the water to come out of it and go to the faucet, which I will show you, it needs pressure. But inside it, there is actually a sort of a balloon, which does not hold that much water. So beware of that. Now the osmosis works when the tank is not full, when that rubbery thing is not full. It will get water from your faucet and actually it will drain some not pure water. And if you're one that cares about economy, this is not okay. It will consume more water than it actually produces. So if you're not okay with that, you know, but that's how osmosis works. While it filters, it actually disperses some unpure water. And this is how it does it. Now, my kit did not come with a proper installation. So what we did is actually dig a hole in the drainage. And this one is not even glued here, but there is not pressure. Water comes pretty slow here, so there's no leaks. There's nothing, but just to be safe, try to find a way to properly connect the outlet to your drainage. Okay, this is the basic thing. Let me show you the faucet now. Okay, so from the pressure tank, you will have a pipe connected to that faucet. This was included in my kit. It's not the best of faucets. 
don't think it's gonna have too much pressure, but it's there. Now this faucet will have pressure as long as the tank is pressurized. If you lose pressure in the tank, you will not have pressure in this faucet, but we'll get to the pressure tank later. Okay, so my osmosis is actually, it's not very full, but let's test it out. Oh, we do have some pressure. Okay, I'm actually gonna test the quality of this water right now so I can show you the difference between this water and the faucet water. So here I have my osmosis water and this is the tap water. We're gonna use a TDS meter. Mind you, this is completely broken. It's totally not accurate. It always shows more than it should, but it gives you an idea. If you want accuracy, I would suggest that you go for an expensive one. Okay, so let's see the osmosis water. And as you can see, I have 0.32 parts per million. Again, this is not accurate. I've actually tested Purify water, bought water, and it's, um, it's even harder than this one. Okay, and now let's test my tap water. As you can see, there is uh, quite the difference. Okay, getting back to the osmosis. Practically, you're gonna need to change the filters periodically. How periodically? It really depends on how much you actually produce. The filters are really not that expensive and I think they are a universal measurement so you can buy any brand. I'll try to stick with this brand because I have it here. I think the filters are about 10 euros each, something like that. But you will need to replace them every six months to one year and a half perhaps, I don't know. You're gonna need to check the requirements of your system and also the way to know is by testing your water. When you see that the water produced is not that pure anymore, I think it's time to change them. Other than that, as prices go, I don't know you guys. You can find like the aquarium osmosis systems which are not this fancy for, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 euros. This one was 250 and you can find even more expensive than this one actually. If you choose for a company to install it, it will cost you more. If you install it yourself, it's better. Just follow the steps inside of the system and it's really not that hard. As long as you keep in mind the pressure and all of that, you should be fine. Don't open this because it's pressurized by default. If you depressurize it, which we did, of course, you will need to pressurize it again. However, on the bottom, it has a sort of jack. It's not a jack, I don't know how to call it. It's like a bicycle. So if you use a bicycle air pump, you can pressurize this. And you need to pressurize it to a certain pressure. <laughs> but you'll find all of that in the user's manual, probably. So this is my osmosis system. I don't know if it helped much, at least understanding how it works, at least knowing a few things about the pressure and that it will spill water while it works, while the tank is empty. It will produce water, but it will also get rid of some unpure water. It's not economical, but if you don't have too many orchids, it will be better. Or if you have orchids which really, really need osmosis water, economy might not be an issue. But if you can, you can use the water spilled. If you have a garden or other plants, somehow you can be inventive and save this water and water your garden and so on. So it's not gonna be a total loss. I cannot, I don't have a garden outside. I was thinking of saving this water, but I'm not sure yet, I might. For now, it is actually consuming and spilling some water and that's that. All osmosis systems work this way. Okay guys, thank you for watching and thank you for suggesting this video. If you have other suggestions, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to make a video. If you'd like to see more orchid videos and other plant-related videos, simply subscribe to my channel. I post on a daily basis. Also, I have an address where you can send me a letter or a package anytime. I'll put it right here, but you can always find it in the description below and I always make unpacking videos. If you click on the left side of your screen, you're gonna be directed to orchidnature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification, sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section and on the right side of your screen you can click to watch another orchid video thank you for joining i'll see you next time bye